Okay, so this is a talk on estimation of OD models with discretization error quantification. <coughs> okay, so in this study, uh, we consider estimation of OD models, differential equation models, from noisy observations. So estimation here, uh, we mean the estimation of unknown system parameter or unknown initial state. So for example, uh, this is the equation model of to Nagumo model for a neural firing. So this is a two-dimensional OD model and there is a system parameter A, B, C and also there is a initial state V0 and R0. And in practice uh, we often do not know about A, B, C or V0 or R0 so we want to estimate them based on observation data. So for such problem uh, the one usual method is to fit numerical solutions like a Euler solution or a kutta solution to the observation data. But such a data fitting procedure has a limited estimation accuracy, uh, especially when the uh, numerical solution is not so accurate. So in other words, uh, we have to account for the discretization error in estimation of OD models. <coughs> so. Uh, the key idea of our study is to consider discretization error as a random variable. So such idea is based on, motivated from a prob probabilistic numerics, like a study by Conrad et al. for probabilistic integrators of ODE. So based on such key idea, uh, we develop a method for estimating ODE models with a quanti discretization error quantification. So uh, technically, uh, it, is, uh, it has the form of iteratively related least squares. And uh, technically, uh, we use a method of isotonic regression and a joint system. So the detail is explained later. <coughs> By using such technique, uh, our method attains a robust estimation uh, used by using a numerical solution of uh, differential equations. Uh, through quantification of the reliability of numerical solutions based on the data. So uh, the preprint of our study is on archive. Okay, so now I talk about the background of OD estimation and the discretization error. So this is the problem setting. Uh, so suppose we have a uh, OD model with unknown parameter theta of this form. And theta may be a, may be an initial state of the ODE or some system parameter. So in general, uh, theta could be both. And then uh, for the data, we assume this observation model. So the observation observation data y of k is generated by this equation. So here h is some linear map, and the r of k is uh, observation noise. Uh, which is modeled as a Gaussian noise with covariance gamma. And then uh, we consider estimation of theta based on the observation data y1 to y of y capital K. So how to solve it? So this is an example of our problem. So here uh, the theta is only initial state, initial value. And here we are considering a one-dimensional ODE. So in this figure, uh, the x-axis corresponds to the time and the y-axis corresponds to the uh, variable of the differential equations. And then uh, this uh, blue line is the trajectory, the true trajectory of the ODE. And the blue points are observations generated from this exact solution. And based on these blue points, we want to estimate the initial state theta, so the black Circle. So for this problem, uh, if we know the exact solution of ODE, then uh, this problem is uh, simple because uh, we can do MLE explicitly. So because we assumed that the observation noise is Gaussian, the maximum likelihood estimator is uh, obtained by least squares method, so by this equation. So yeah, so if the ODE can be solved explicitly, then this is just a least square, 
But in practice, we don't, we don't have exact solution, closed form solution of ODE. So we have to substitute some kind of new maker solution, X tilde. So the one simple way is just substitute X tilde like this form. So we call it a crash maximum likelihood estimate. Uh, but uh, uh, such method may be not good because uh, the discretization error, the difference between x tilde and x x, may be not, not negligible in general. So in such case, uh, it is not clear if uh, by using the x tilde uh, we can obtain a good estimate of theta. So this is a, a intuitive picture of the initial value estimation case. So the red line corresponds to red curve uh, is a numerical solution, x tilde. So in such case, uh, the difference between the red curve and blue curve, the discretization error, is not negligible. So uh, by just using a red curve to fit blue points uh, has a non-negligible bias. So the estimation accuracy becomes worse. So the question here is, uh, can we obtain a better estimator by accounting for the discretization error, the, dif the difference between exact solution and the numerical solution? So here is the intuition of our study. So, uh, so the numerical solution, x tilde, uh, with smaller discretization error, I mean, if the time, time is more fast, then uh, the, the discretization error is not so large. So in other words, uh, the data points at the left are more reliable than right. Uh, sorry, the numerical solution at the left is more reliable than right. So uh, based on this, uh, we should give more priority to data fitting at smaller k in the left, left side. So such a such a situation appears uh, also in the heteroscedastic regression, uh, which is which is often appears in statistics and econometrics. So this is a situation where the regression model has a non-constant variance. So uh, as this figure shows, uh, the noise variance and the variance of epsilon k may depend on x of k, the explanatory variable. So in this figure, uh, the variance is larger for light. So as you can see, uh, in such case, uh, it, is more, it is better to put more priority to fit the black points at the left than right. And uh, indeed, uh, in such case, uh, the MRE, maximum likelihood estimate, is written as a weighted list of squares. So here, the weight is written by W of K and which is equal to uh, the inverse of variance of noise. So uh, in other words, uh, if the noise variance is large, then the weight becomes small. So it means that the, this estimate ha gives more priority, larger weight to more reliable, the smaller variance samples. So in this case, uh, the weight becomes larger at the left and the weight is smaller at the right. So by using such, such method, uh, we can balance the fit as fit of, uh, uh, depending on the reliability of the data. So uh, we use such idea to estimate differential equation models. Okay, so now I explain the main idea of considering discretization error as a random variable. So uh, first, we rewrite the model. So we consider discretization error as a random variable. Uh, such idea is motivated from a recent trend of probabilistic numerics. So for example, there is a study by paper by Conrad et al. Uh, to, to do a probabilistic integration of ODE. So in, in those studies, uh, we mod they model the discretization error Z, Z of C of K as a Gaussian random variable. 
So here we assume that the discretization error Q3 of k is a Gaussian variable with covariance V of k. And, and also uh, the observation model is written like this middle equation. So by combining these two equations, we obtain the uh, bottom equation, uh, which describes the relation between the data y of k and the numerical solution x tilde. So here we introduced uh, E of k as a sum of discretization error and observation noise. And because uh, they are independent, uh, we can just uh, put we can just add to the covariance of each Gaussian random variable, and uh, as a result, we obtain this covariance form of E of k. Okay, so now, so uh, in summary, uh, we obtain this heteroscedastic regression model between the y of k and x tilde. So, to, so then we want to solve it, we want to use it to estimate theta. But then uh, the problem is how to set the discretization error variance V of k. So V of k is the covariance matrix of the covari uh, discretization error C of k. So in other words, it quantifies the magnitude of discretization error at the k step of numerical solution. So here uh, we propose to estimate V of k based on data. So the key assumption here is uh, to model the discretization error as a monotone, monotone function. So the intuition is that uh, the discretization error should accumulate in every step of uh, numerical integration of ODE. So because of this accumula accumulation, uh, the variance of V of K should be non-decreasing, monotone increasing. So this, this monotone order condition should, should hold. So we, we assume this, uh, we, we introduce this order constraint to the covariance of discretization error V of k. And such order constraint uh, appears often in mathematical statistics, and uh, the estimation of a parameter under such order constraint is called isotonic regression problem, and it is uh, well studied in the uh, literature of mathematical statistics. Okay, so, so now we go on to the proposed method. Okay, so uh, again, so this is the formulation of our problem. So the data generation model is like this. So the data y of k is generated by the, the relation between the data y of k and the numerical solution x tilde is written like this. And here we assume that the uh, discretization error variance is monotone increasing so corresponding to that, we have a order constraint for the uh, this sigma square parameter. So under this order constraint, we estimate the parameter theta and also the discretization error variance sigma. So we estimate both of them by using a maximum likelihood estimate like this bottom equations. So we maximize the log likelihood with respect to theta and sigma. Okay, so uh, he. I don't explain the detail, technical detail, but uh, di let's introduce the residual term R of k uh, like this. Then, uh, based on the Gaussian assumption, the log likelihood is written like this middle equation. Uh, so, uh, by using this log likelihood representation, uh, we can we can write down the MLE like this optimization problem under order constraint. So we want to minimize this objective function with respect to theta and sigma under the order constraint on sigma. So we solve this minimization problem by uh, alternating minimization with, with respect to theta and sigma. So uh, in other words, we use uh, iteratively related least squares to, uh, to do a maximum likelihood estimation. So we iterate the following two steps until convergence. The first step is update of sigma. So here, uh, the sig update of sigma, uh, this is actually uh, has, a, has a form of isotonic, isotonic regression problem in statistics. So this is a minimization of a convex function under the order constraint. So, uh, uh, 
So we can solve it by using a combinatorial algorithm called PABA. So it, this is uh, efficiently solved in closed form. Then after updating sigma, we update theta. So here, uh, the update of theta is based on the weighted least squares problem. I mean, so once we fix sigma, then the problem with, with respect to theta is like this bottom equation, so it, this is a weighted least squares problem. So for such problem, uh, we, we solve it by a gradient method, the nonlinear optimization method, like a, a nonlinear conjugate gradient for quasi Newton. So to do that, uh, we, we need the gradient of the objective function with respect to theta. And uh, actually, there is, a, there is a method using a joint system of the original ODE model to obtain the exact gradient of the numerical solution with respect, with respect to initial condition theta. Uh, so I don't explain the detail, but uh, there is a uh, li result by Sanselna for using a symplectic partition ring kutta method to obtain the gradient efficiently. So by using this technique, we, we solve this updating of theta uh, numerically. Okay, so now uh, we show our result of numerical experiments. So here we, we, we show the result on Lorentz model. So this is a three-dimensional OD model uh, of this form. So the tra trajectory looks like this figure. And for this model, we want to estimate both initial state and system parameter. So there is a three initial state, x1, 0, x, x2, 0, and x3, 0. And also there is an unknown parameter, sigma, rho, beta. So based on our observation data, we estimate both initial state and system parameter simultaneously. So here, uh, here is the uh, observation setting. So we observe uh, three variables, x1, x2, x3, at uh, discrete time points, uh, like this figure. So this black dot shows the observation data. And here, the, uh, the black line is the solution of Euler method. And uh, red and blue curve, actually, they almost overlap. Uh, they are a solution by Hoyne method and lung method. So uh, in, in terms of numerical analysis, uh, the accuracy, lung method has the best accuracy among these three methods, and the Euler method has the worst accuracy among these three methods. So you can see that the, for Euler method, uh, the, the numerical solution becomes, uh, becomes far, far from the solution by Hoyne and lung -Kutta. So in other words, the discretization error by Euler method is large, about around time t equal 1. So uh, we want to use this black dots, the observation data, to estimate the initial state and also the system parameter. Okay, so first uh, we, show, we, we check the convergence of the proposed method. So because uh, our method is an iterative update of theta and sigma, uh, we, here we plot the convergence with, with, with respect to the iteration count. So as you can see, uh, our method converges in a few iterations, like uh, three, two or three iterations. And, uh, and uh, here, we, uh, here uh, we show a three line corresponding to three OD solvers, and you can see that the error, estimation error by uh, Euler method is a bit worse than uh, Hoyne and lung -Kutta. So this is uh, plausible uh, because uh, Euler has a vast accuracy. So uh, we, can, we can see that the, we have a better estimation accuracy for higher order OD solvers. Okay, so this is the estimation accuracy with, res with respect to the step size of the uh, OD solver. So here uh, is a result of it on Euler method. And here, uh, as you can see, the error becomes smaller at when the step size is smaller. 
So yeah, it, this, is, this is also plausible because when the step size is small, then the numerical solution should be more accurate. And as you can see, uh, the IRLS, our method, has better accuracy than conventional method. Here, conventional method means uh, just fit the numerical solution without any weighting. And here, uh, the IRLS 1, 2, 3 means uh, uh, the iteration, the first iteration, second iteration, th third iteration. Okay, so in this way, uh, our method improves estimation accuracy by accounting for discretization error. This is a result on Runge-Kutta method. And actually, in this case, uh, Runge-Kutta is very accurate for this model. Uh, so uh, the dependence on step size is not so clear. It is almost, almost constant with, with respect to step size. But again, uh, we, have, we can check that uh, the, our method has better accuracy than conventional method. Okay, so now uh, we check, uh, we show that our method uh, quantifies the discretization error successfully. So this is a result with Euler method with step size this value. And here this figure shows the uh, weight, estimated weight and estimated discretization error and the actual discretization error for the first variable of Euler uh, Lorentz model. So here, the, the red solid line shows the estimate, estimate of the weight, and uh, it is monotone decreasing. So yeah, so because we assumed that the discretization error is monotone increasing, the, so the corresponding to the, that order constraint, uh, we have a monotone decreasing weight, like this red solid line. And uh, you can see that uh, the estimated weight becomes almost zero when around time t equal one. And corresponding to that, uh, you, we can see that uh, the discretization error, actual discretization error uh, is, uh, sorry, so the, here the black and red is uh, inverse, so the, this black, black dot is uh, actual discretization error. And uh, the red dot is the uh, uh, estimated discretization error. And anyway, we, you can see that uh, the estimation of discretization error uh, uh, captures the uh, rapid growth of discretization error around t equal 1. So in this way, uh, we can quantify the discretization error based on the data. And then use that information to improve the estimate, estimate of OD model. Okay, so this is a result with several OD solvers. So here we, we compare three solvers, Euler and Euler with a more small step size and the kutta method. And you can see that uh, when the OD solver is more accurate, then the weight becomes larger. But this is also intuitive because uh, the larger weight means uh, more reliability of solution, numerical solution. So in this way, uh, we can obtain uh, information about the numerical solution accuracy as a byproduct of this estimation method. So I mean, uh, if, if we check the weight and, and we can check that the weight is almost constant like this blue line or magenta line, then uh, we can conclude that the numerical solution of, uh, we are using is, uh, is accurate enough to do the parameter estimation of the uh, of the current situation. And in, in the paper, we did another experiment on Fitzhugh-Nagmo model and also Kepler model. Uh, so for detail, uh, please see the preprint on archive. So for the Kepler model, uh, we employed the uh, OD solver called symplectic integrator, uh, which, which belongs to a class of uh, geometric integrator. So we, we, which preserves some geometric, pro, geometric property of the OD model. And in, uh, in such case also, we can apply our method to quantify the discretization error and then improve the pro estimate of OD model. Okay, so this is a summary of our talk. So in this study, we developed a method for estimating OD models with discretization error quantification. So the main idea here was to assume that 
the discretization error is a random variable. And based on this idea, uh, we estimated the unknown parameter and also the discretization error variance simultaneously. And in this way, our method improves estimation accuracy by quantifying discretization error based on data. So uh, for the detail of our technical detail of this method, please see the preprint on archive. Thank you.